let's look at upper and lower bounds. So an upper bound is the largest value a number can be before it is rounded. A lower bound is the smallest value a number can be before it is rounded. So this relates to when we're rounding decimals, when we're rounding whole numbers, then we can find the upper bounds and the lower bounds of the numbers that we round. For example, a number rounded to the nearest whole number is six. What is the upper bound and lower bound? When we're rounding a number to the nearest whole number, we look at the first decimal place and if it's five or more, we round up. If it's less than five, we round down. We know that we need to have decimals for our upper bound and our lower bound. And we also know that we need to think about the smallest possible value and the biggest possible value that the numbers can take. That when rounded equal to six. If we were to have 5.5, then we know that 5.5, we look at the first decimal place, which is the five, because five is five or more, then this number rounds up and it rounds to six to the nearest whole number. There is no other number less than 5.5 that would round up to six, since any number less than this would have a four in the first decimal place. And that would always mean that the number would round down. So even for instance, 5.4999, we know that this number to the nearest whole number is equal to 5 because the 4 is less than 5 and so we round this down. Therefore 5.5 is equal to the lower bound. Now if we want to work out the upper bound, we require the biggest possible number that when rounded to the nearest whole number equals to 6. Now technically the upper bound for 6 is equal to 6.49 recurring. Since there would be no other number bigger than this that would round to 6 when rounded to the nearest whole number. Remember the first decimal place determines whether we round up or whether we round down to the nearest whole number. So in this case we've got a 4 here in the first decimal place and so this number would round down to 6 to the nearest whole number. Now 6.49 recurring is a very long number to write out so this would be 6.4999 and this would carry on going forever. And so to avoid the issue of having to write really long numbers the convention we use is we write 6.5 instead for the upper bound since 6.5 is much easier to write but also although 6.5 rounded to the nearest whole number is equal to 7 and not 6 it's the smallest possible value that when rounded to the nearest whole number is equal to 7. In other words any number less than 6.5 but greater than 5.5 or equal to 5.5 would always round to 6 when rounded to the nearest whole number. And so our upper bound is equal to 6.5. We can't have any number greater than or equal to 6.5 or more that would round down to 6. And so we say that our upper bound is equal to 6.5. way to find the upper and lower bound of a number is the following. So to find the upper bound, we add half of the unit we rounded to. And to find the lower bound, we subtract half of the unit we rounded to. Look at some examples. So the first example is 6. We would have had a number that when rounded to the nearest whole number is equal to 6. To find the upper or lower bounds, we can do the following. So if we look at one of the units that we rounded to, in this case the nearest whole number, we know that whole numbers go up in ones, and so the unit would be one. Half of one is equal to 0 0.5. So if we add 0 0.5 to six, we would get the upper bound. And if we subtract 0 0.5 from six, we will get the lower bound. So in this case, the upper bound is equal to six plus 0 0.5, which is equal to 6.5. And the lower bound is equal to six minus 0 0.5, which is equal to 5.5. 
and we saw this in the previous example. The second example is 20, so we would have had a number that when rounded to the nearest 10 is equal to 20. And so since we're going up in tens, when we go up in tens we carry on adding 10 each time and so our unit would be 10. Half of 10 is equal to 5 and so if we add and subtract 5 from 20 we would obtain our upper and lower bound. So in this case the upper bound is 20 plus 5 which is 25 and the lower bound is 20 minus 5 which is 15. See that 15 is the smallest possible number that when rounded to the nearest 10 is 20. All numbers less than 25 are equal to 20 when rounded to the nearest 10. Finally we've got 300 so we would have had a number that when rounded to the nearest 100 is equal to 300. So since we're rounded to the nearest 100, our unit is 100, we're going up in hundreds, and half of 100 is equal to 50. So we need to add and subtract 50 from 300 to obtain our upper and lower bound. So in this case, our upper bound would be 300 plus 50, which is 350, and our lower bound would be 300 minus 50, which is equal to 250. The smallest possible number that when rounded to the nearest 100 is equal to 300 is 250. So all numbers between 350 and 250 would round to 300 to the nearest 100.